Dave Canales is bringing a whole new look to the Buccaneers offense with his system. Let's go. You are Locked On Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to the Locked On Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we thank you for making us your first listen or view of the day. I am James Yarko, Deputy Editor of SB Nation's BucksNation.com, flying solo on this episode, but you can find my co-host David Harrison doing great work over at Sports Illustrated's BucksGameDay.com. And of course, follow everything on Twitter at Locked On Bucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks, and at D Harrison82. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. Kyle Trask fans might find themselves a little more optimistic after Dave Canales spoke about his fit in the offense, but more on that later. Yes, this episode is coming a little bit later because we wanted to hear from new Buccaneers offensive coordinator Dave Canales, who met with the media for the first time on Wednesday, and to say that he is an excited ball of energy would be an understatement. And the biggest takeaway from his media availability that lasted over 30 minutes is the system that he is bringing to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He used the word system numerous, numerous times. And I know some of you are already starting to get kind of like, you know, flashbacks to the Dirk Cutter, Lovey Smith, uh, Mike Smith days of, you know, trying to force a system on players that the system doesn't fit. You don't have to worry about that here. We will get into that. But he is, he talked about how the system has proven itself all the way back to the USC days, talking about Carson Palmer, Matt Leiner, Matt Barkley, that the system is friendly to quarterbacks with the balance of the run game. He said, quote, you've got to take the quarterback off the high dive and teaching the quarterback how to win is a critical part of this system. They are always looking, Canales especially in this system, they're always looking for the quarterback's comfort zone. And he had mentioned you tilt the system towards what the quarterback is going to be successful doing. And a marriage, he mentioned numerous times, the marriage between the run game and the pass game. And he said, if the run isn't working, we're going to throw it more. If the pass isn't working, we're going to run it more. There may be games where we run it 40 times and you just do whatever it takes to win and protect the football. It's not about establishing the run. It's about establishing the offense. And that is, is a great thing to hear. And I know, again, some of you may kind of be flinching a little bit, thinking, I don't want this team who finished dead last in the National Football League to run the ball 40 times, but the run game is going to be different under Canales, especially when it comes to Rashad White, who we will get into in a little bit. But you take a look at, at the Seattle Seahawks offense that averaged nearly five yards a carry, and that was the perfect compliment, especially this past season where Geno Smith won comeback player of the year, that it was a balancing act. And when Geno wasn't on, they were leaning on Kenneth Walker. They were leaning on their run game. When the run game wasn't working, Geno was efficient. He protected the football. He found his receivers and let them make plays. And that's exactly what we didn't see in Tampa last season under Byron Leftwich. When the run wasn't working, they kept running the ball. When the pass wasn't working, they kept passing the ball. And there was no there was no balancing act between the two. It seemed like we're going in with these 70 offensive plays in this order, and that's what we're going to do regardless of the situation, regardless of 
situational awareness, regardless of what the defense is doing. These are the plays that we're running. This is the order that we're running them in, and that's it. So, yeah, you may see five or six Buccaneers possessions in a row where they're running the ball on first down every time, but it'll be because the run game is working or something that he had mentioned before is if the run game, you have to get those ugly two or three yards early so that those become four or five yards. And then those become 10 or 12 yards down the line. That's exactly what they're going to implement in Tampa. They're not going to force whoever the quarterback is to do things that are not within their comfort zone. They are going to run an efficient system based on the talent that they have operating that system. You hope, you hope that this isn't just coach speak and that we're actually going to see this type of game out of the Buccaneers offense under Dave Canales, who has not called plays in a very, very long time. But how is all of this going to affect the only quarterback on the Buccaneers roster right now? That's coming up next on Locked on Bucks. This episode of Locked on Bucks is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars that's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app it's safe secure super easy to use the you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and three pointers drained and you all know how much I love my same game parlays well FanDuel lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with those same game parlays. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thank you again for making Locked On Bucks your first listen or view of the day. And you all knew that Dave Canales was not going to escape this press conference when he made himself available for a half an hour without speaking about Kyle Trask. And as it appears, he seems high on the second round pick from just a few years ago. And now maybe that's because he truly believes in Kyle Trask and in his ability to be the starting quarterback or it could be because he doesn't want to tip his hand as to what the discussions are behind closed doors about the quarterback position for the Buccaneers in 2023. Either way, he appeared confident that Trask can succeed in the system as he continued to refer to it. That's an, again, it's a word that we heard a lot in this press conference was system, the system, the system. And he had talked about, you know, the guys that are here are the ones that are here right now. You know, that that's who we're going to speak about. That's who we're going to refer to. But he talked about Kyle Trask, and he said that with Kyle, the quarterback run and read stuff will not be a big feature in what they do. He's got Canales talked about Trask having short space quickness and a real gritty, savvy way of avoiding pressure. And, and there's no concern for Canales that Kyle can run this offensive system. And he said, right now, the system is the system and it handles any real type of quarterback. We're not building it through Kyle, but as I get to know, him, we'll cater it to his wheelhouse. The system is a marriage of the run and pass and the flexibility of tempo and personnel. So Kyle Trask, if given the opportunity, if he if if he makes it out of OTAs, out of mini camps, out of training camp as the starting quarterback, this is the kind of mentality that you want your offensive coordinator to have. Yet he continued to clarify that his system involves focusing on player strengths, not forcing the round pegs into the square holes. So if Trask is the guy, they'll create a myriad of looks to create a, a to create confusion and uncertainty for the opposing defense. But he stressed that all these different looks 
will be to execute simple concepts. They want to accomplish a small number of things out of a lot of different looks to keep things simple for the offense, but difficult for the defense. So they're going to be locked and loaded on that play sheet, basing it off of what Kyle can and cannot accomplish as the starting quarterback. You're not going to ask him to go out there and be Jalen Hurts or be Josh Allen or be Patrick Mahomes because that's not who he is. But you can ask him to go out there and be Jacoby Brissett or Geno Smith or Baker Mayfield. You can ask him to be efficient, to be intelligent, to take care of the football, and that's exactly what he is going to stress his system being built around. And that's going to be really interesting to see considering Canales is going to be a first-time play caller. Now, Canales did smile and clarify that he has called plays before, but not since he was a JV high school coach. And Canales said that he's never called plays at the collegiate or NFL level. And he said, I respect the play calling position and how hard it is. I respect the skill that guys have to have, the mastery of the play sheet. I'm going to take some bumps and make some mistakes, but I have coaches here I can lean on. I'm a quick study, and play calling is not the hardest part of this job. The hardest part is creating a culture and the game plan aspect. Play calling is just fun. It's the payoff at the end of the week. And when you're the pass game coordinator like I was, you have to know the play sheet front and back. And that was a great point. You know, He may not have been the play caller, but he knew the exact game plan for the passing game. He knew exactly what was on the play sheet for that game and how to best execute those plays. Working with quarterbacks, working with wide receivers, he had a vast, deep knowledge of the offensive game plan every single week. And he talked about how when Russell was there and Gina was the backup and, and they would have to have the twos go up against the first team defense, he, he was calling those plays in practice and he was having a blast when he and Gina would team up to make the first team defense look bad. It was something that he prided himself on. So translating that to real time game calling and, and play calling at the NFL level as the offensive coordinator, he does have a little bit of practice reps in him. We'll see how it translates, but you know, he's exactly right. And he's fully aware of the fact that he's not going to get it right every time. He is going to make mistakes. He is going to take his lumps as a first time play caller, and he's going to learn from that. And that's something that he's done every step along the way from starting as an, as an assistant at USC, then working his way up to receivers coach at Seattle, working his way up to the quarterbacks coach with Seattle. He continues to learn what does work, what doesn't work, how he can incorporate his personnel into the things that need to get done to force or, or ensure, force is a bad word, to ensure that the offense can be successful. So that's something that's, again, it goes back to will Kyle Trask be the quarterback or not in the 2023 season? And he's going to learn very quickly through the offseason programs, through his sit-downs with Kyle, what is going to work for this offense. You're not going to have Kyle Trask drop back for and, and hold the ball for four, five, six seconds. You may need him to be quick, but not exactly mobile. Maybe it's the short to intermediate routes. It's it's the you know over the middle stuff rather than the quick out routes. Those kinds of things will get hammered out and the offense will begin to be catered around those strengths. What if they bring in Drew Locke? What if they bring in Baker Mayfield? What if they bring in Jacoby Brissett? What if they shoot for the stars and, and figure out a way to bring Derek Carr or Jimmy Garoppolo into this offense? The same mentality will be applied. What can my quarterback do? What is he capable of doing on a consistent basis that's not going to hamper our offense, but is also not going to put the ball in danger. That was that was such a key focal point for him is protecting the football. That's why he went out and hired Skip Pete, who we are going to talk about here in just a moment. 
He talked about the utilization of the wide receivers and, and how having guys like Mike and Chris one-on-one -on -one outside the numbers is a great thing, but that they are also very good in the run game, and you don't want to make the offense get into a man-on-man -man situation, play after play, game after game. He said you're not going to win football games that way. So having the versatility of having Mike or Chris on the outside but being able to move either one of them inside. He brought up Russell Gage's versatility and his ability as a run blocker, which is going to help this team keep opposing defenses honest. You just love the way that he kind of would light up and talk about the versatility of his receivers, that they can succeed in, in press against press man coverage. They can succeed against zone coverage. They, they have an incredible receiving core right out of the gate with Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Russell Gage, that the system is going to be wide open based off of what he is comfortable with his quarterback doing. And again, he spoke really highly of Kyle Trask, but he said, you, I believe it was Jenna Lane. I'm not 100% sure, so don't hold me to that. She had brought up the fact that Seattle ran a lot out of the pistol. That's not something that you will see with Kyle Trask because that's not in his wheelhouse. So the focus that, that Canales has on his system, but orchestrating that around the ability of his roster is exactly why Bucks fans, Bucks media are excited about the hire of Dave Canales. And again, if you have the opportunity, head over to Buccaneers.com. Watch the press conference. He is just a constant ball of energy. It reminds me so much of just kind of this big kid. It's, I don't really know who to compare to, but he, he's like a big kid. He's just happy to be there. He's all smiles. He's so excited to get started working with this team and working with this offense, working with his coaches that, that he is repeated numerous times that he can lean on because of their vast experience. And, and he mentioned coaches that he's worked with before that he had to lean on and he learned so much from. So you, you know what you're getting in Dave Canales, and it is going to be a situational offense where they're going to be pass heavy. Sometimes they're going to be run heavy sometimes, but his number one focus is don't turn the football over that was a little bit of a problem last year for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but they brought in somebody in Skip Pete who was coming off of a year where his position group didn't turn the ball over once. So Buccaneers fans should get really excited about Rashad White next season with Canales manning the ship in the addition of running backs coach Skip Pete. That's next here on Locked on Bucks. <laughs> Wrapping things up here on the Locked On Bucks podcast, talking about new offense coordinator Dave Canales meeting with the media, talking about what he wants to accomplish, where he's come from, where he wants to take this football team. And Rashad White is a player on everyone's mind following the hire of Skip P, which Canales was way excited uh, to talk about. Pete was Dallas Cow the Dallas Cowboys running backs coach since 2020. Before that, he was the Los Angeles Rams running backs coach from 2016 to 2019. He is coming off of a season where the Cowboys didn't have a single fumble at the running back position, and that is huge. When Canales was asked about the run game, he said, everything we do, all 11 guys, it's about protecting the football. Skip Pete, zero running back fumbles last season in Dallas. Fundamentals and attitude, no catering to anyone. He talked about, we, could treat, we critique effort first. It's the marriage of the run and the pass game. That's the identity of the Buccaneers offense. Things that look one way and end up something different, simple in concept, complex in delivery, so execution stays at a high level. Situational awareness is the key, and they are able to adjust with the lack of volume. So they they don't have they don't overload their players 
with 150,000 different looks, they keep it simple and they can execute a lot of different concepts out of the same look, or they can execute one concept out of a lot of different looks. They're going to keep it simple for their players, but he talks specifically about the run game and he says, you have to have great players, great system, great coaching up front to get the play started. Having play actions, bootlegs, it slows down the back end just enough to open things up. And as, as I mentioned earlier, he said, you have to get the ugly two and three yards early on because those become four or five yards a little bit later. And by the end, those are getting 12 yards. And then he was asked about Rashad White, who had arguably his best game of the season right in front of Dave Canales uh, against the Seattle Seahawks over in Munich, Germany. And he said that he kind of had, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he had kind of a, a preconceived notion of who Rashad White was. And, and it took him by surprise in the game against the Seahawks where he said the toughness in the style that he ran with. He's versatile in the run and the pass game, but he runs downhill. He's aggressive. He's violent. And this guy can be really special. So that's where Skip Pete comes in. And I was talking to my son about it. I didn't have the opportunity to talk to David about it. I'm interested to hear his thoughts. We all know that he's a Rashad White guy. But you take a look at what Skip Pete was able to do with the Dallas running backs last season. And yes, the no turnovers is a massive, massive part of it. But you take a look at the explosion of Tony Pollard and how the majority of NFL fans, NFL media, you know, distant observers to the diehard uh, Cowboys fans or the, the knowledgeable Cowboys media talking about how Tony Pollard should be the number one guy in that offense over Ezekiel Elliott. Rashad White has all the makings to be just like Tony Pollard, a guy that can run the ball with, with fury, with aggression, with protection of the football, but can also split out. He can make plays in the passing game, making catches out of the backfield, taking short passes and making long gains. And Skip Pete's tutelage of Rashad White is going to be massive because Rashad White could be in now for a absolute explosion of a sophomore season if Skip Pete can get him to follow the Tony Pollard model. Probably going to dive deeper into this later on. We have the questions about whether or not Leonard Fournette is going to return to the team. I think he's probably on the way out. David thinks he might stick around. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. But you could legitimately create a one-two punch like Pollard and Zeke with Rashad White and Leonard Fournette. Now, something that Skip Pete is going to have to work on is the short yardage situation runs by Leonard Fournette. He did not have a lot of success with those last season, but we've seen him have success with those in the past. It's about getting consistency. It's about getting the best out of your running back in those situations. Will Leonard Fournette be upset if Rashad White becomes the number one guy. I mean, we saw him basically become the starter, but it was still a committee for the most part down the stretch for the Buccaneers last season. But the explosiveness, the versatility, the overall skill set that Rashad White has had a little bit of a fumbling problem there at the end of the season. So that's going to have to get cleaned up. But that makes Rashad White the best option as a weapon out of the backfield for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going into 2023. Again, Leonard Fournette can absolutely have a role in this offense. He can absolutely be a contributing factor to this run game, and, and we know that he does really well as a pass catcher out of the backfield. But he and Rashad White have different strengths and weaknesses. I'm really, really excited about the hire of Skip Pete for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and what he can do with Rashad White. So lots to like out of the Dave Canales press conference. But again, it's about doing and not just saying. So it's going to be a while before we see all of this come to fruition if it does. But there's no question in my mind after seeing, you know, a lot of Canales's background, 
and seeing the way he spoke about what he wants to do with this offense, how he wants to accomplish it, and the players that he knows he can accomplish it with, that the Buccaneers absolutely made the right decision for their offensive coordinator hire. With that, I will bid you all a fair adieu. Thank you all so much for making Locked on Bucks your first listen or view of the day. David will be back tomorrow. I'm sure he will have plenty of reaction to Canales, and I'm sure he will have a reaction to what I said about Rashad White. Might be one of the few times that he actually goes, you know what, James? You nailed it. You actually got this one right. I'm not going to disagree with you and lord it over your head for the foreseeable future. But if you have questions or topic ideas, make sure you send them to Locked On Bucks Podcast at gmail.com or send them into the DMs at Locked On Bucks on Twitter. We've been getting your mock drafts. Appreciate all those. Keep those coming. If we use yours on the show, of course, you will be entered in for one of our draft giveaways. Very excited about that. Make sure you're checking out everything that I'm doing over at BucksNation.com. Check out David's work over at BucksGameDay.com. And of course, follow everything on Twitter at LockedOnBucks, at JayArco underscore Bucks, and at DHarrison82. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire the cannons. And we thank you so much for joining us right here at LockedOnBucks.